Hi, it's John. Now I'm just uh, going through to my second excerpt from Norris's autobiography. And this is on page 129. Um, it's part of a section of the book where he's just running through his friends uh, that he has when he's about 17. And most of them seem to die. Um, not through accident or I think well sometimes through accident I think but mainly through just illness or I don't know anyway he comes on to this chap called Simon um, and he says I, I, don't, I can't I can't claim that I understand all this what is written I mean most of it I don't understand I don't know whether I, some people understand all of it but I don't in affection distress my life briefly matches that of Simon Topping. Now what, what that means, I don't know, affection distress. Um, in affection distress, my life briefly matches that of Simon Topping. I don't know what that means. Newly free of school, living with his parents and his sister, Joy, in Flixton. And Morrissey says, do you mean to say that your sister is actually called Joy Topping? I ask. Yes, he laughs. Soon the new motorbike ro rolls up at King's Road with regularity. And I wonder what it is that he wants. I open the door and he stands before me holding a copy of Nico's Chelsea Girl LP. Have you heard this? His Dana Andrews smile at full rev. Translated into nine languages, I say, except English. I trail away, not in the least bit funny. Nonetheless, it's Nico's Chelsea Girl that fills our afternoons at King's Road as rain batters the window a cluttered tea tray on the floor before us, Simon appears to be the first person who likes me for all the reasons that others usually dislike me. It has been a hard, long war. It was enough just to sit there, minus the usual nonsense of trying to make myself interesting. I think that's just fantastic. Uh, little sentence there. Um, Simon appears to be the first person who likes me for the reasons that others usually dislike me. I suppose it would be nice if uh, if he'd elaborated a bit there to just to tell us what 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 it was that Simon liked about him and that others disliked about him. But we can we can guess that what Simon liked about him was his sort of vagueness and uh, his artiness, um, uh, his unconventionality, or ex as some might say, his extreme conventionality, because Morrissey, in some senses, is extremely conventional. He's like of tea and, uh, and such like. Um, and I suppose one of the things about Morrissey is that he's exceedingly irritating. That if you, it seems like if interviewers make a, a statement about him, um, he'll always contradict them. And of course that would be quite annoying, wouldn't it? But maybe that's what Simon likes about him. You know, the fact that he challenges everything. I mean, I suppose everybody likes their own conventions and there'll be uh, the little groups that people sort of get in, sort of friendship groups, would be about the conventions that those people choose to keep. And if you come across somebody who has the same sort of conventions as you, that it's conventional to be critical all the time or whatever, 
then that, that, that's probably what he's on about here, that he found a, a, like a soul mate in, in this Simon. Um, so uh, that's it for now. Right, bye. You've had the almost imponderable joy of watching the John Simpson channel, which means you are a really good person.